It is time to take a break from basketball and dive into some football conversations. You guys know legacies to me are the biggest thing, the most important thing, and the best thing that we can do to help extend our recruiting future. And we may have started you are doing Locked that. on Oklahoma State, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma State Cowboys, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Howdy, y'all, and hello, all. Welcome back to Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily stop for all things cowboy and cowgirl related. I want to thank you kindly for stopping by to make this your first listen. We're available on all of your podcasting platforms, visually as well on YouTube. Find me, Cody Stowell, personally on X at All Day O State. Today, we're partially brought to you by Nissan. If you have the right drive, passion, and experience, the Nissan Rogue, Pathfinder, or the Big Body Beast of Armada should be the next rig you take on your big adventure. Check them all out today at NissanUSA.com. We get to take a little bit of a break from basketball and dive into some football conversations. And you guys already know, I chastised Casey Dunn for not extending an offer to a legacy who had already received several Big 12 offers. It was maddening. It was frustrating. And I was about to start the clock of how many days Casey Dunn was going to kick the can down the road and then literally 42 hours later he makes the offer to me the most important offer of the 2026 class in tatum deuce bell so let's bring old papa bear bell on to discuss what tatum bell's future could potentially look like whether it's in orange or it's in red and black i know texas tech has got their feelers in super early right they're in in basketball they're in on track so we've got a little bit of catching up to do but Tatum, first of all, thank you for being patient and, and joining the show. How are we feeling today, sir? Doing good. Doing good. All is well. Appreciate you having me on. Uh, no, nah, we we don't have to go off on Dunn, man. Dunn, you know, they they make their offers in their own. <laughs> pressing about it, you know what I mean? And it, it came, and it's all that matters, you know what I mean? And, and he, he fell in love with OSU when we went down there for the camp last year. And, you know, he was showing around the facilities, and man, he he felt at home. He felt the same energy I felt, and it, it was a, it, you know they impressed him. Well, you know the saying, "The deuce is loose in Stillwater, dude." I cannot wait. That it has such a sweet sound to it. And if if you take take the Papa Bear lens out of the equation, because obviously, right, you're a legacy. Oklahoma State means a tremendous amount to you. What has Tatum done recently in your eyes to show you that he's 100% ready for this level of football? Man, you playing in Texas, you know, coming out. And if you can play in Texas, you can, you can play anywhere. And uh, his freshman year, he played on varsity nine games, well, 10 games, including the playoffs. This year, his sophomore year, he had a, we will say, a breakout season. And it was, it could have been better, but we, okay. we, we just taking it, taking it slow, and and I've been kind of. He always had that dog in him since he was he was young. He always he always had that dog, and and it shows in basketball and and track. Now he's kind of been ducking some smoke a little bit, but we'll get. To- <laughs> <laughs> My God, had that dog in him. Hey man, but he's got a big time four by one hundred coming up, right? He can make some magic happen in in that department. Uh, speaking of track and field, whenever you look at uh, you know, Deuce's capabilities, what to you stands out as his biggest asset? Is it speed? Is it elusivity? Is it hands? Is it vertical? What do you think is his best attribute coming out of high school? I say right now it'll be I say definitely hands. He definitely has some hands. He can grab it. He can pluck it, uh, and he's good. You know the the receiving after the, the yak. That's 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 I'll say that's his biggest strength is you know once he gets it that's where the running back instincts turn in you know he, he he's thinking touchdown instead of just he just trying to get he just he 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 reminds me of kind of that Anquan Bolden uh okay Bo Sam you you know what I mean he that because you know he's five ten doesn't mean you know he he plays bigger than his size 
if, if that makes sense. Well, yeah, it makes sense, Tatum. With all due respect, buddy, it's not like you're six foot three, two hundred twenty pounds, right? You had to make you had to make yourself a valuable asset because of your speed, your elusivity, your ability to catch the ball out of the backfield. You were kind of the, in my personal opinion, Quentin Griffin, right? When he went to the Denver Broncos, he was one of the people that you know I knew was a good candidate for the idea of a third down back, right? You took that and then you ran with it, and then you turned it into over a thousand yard season with the Denver Broncos. Speaking of statistics, all right, you mentioned Deuce getting to play as a freshman, and that was at times due to necessity, right? Whether it was going to be a running back or wide receiver. But for those of everybody out there in cowboy country, um, I had the stats in front of me when we recorded the other day, right? But <laughs> I, I, if I recall correctly, he had 694 yards receiving this previous season. He has eight touchdowns. He goes over a, over a buck 20 between punt returns, kick returns, which puts him at 811 total yards thus far in just a year and a half uh, coming into high school. He's this close to eclipsing that 1,000-yard club, brother, and he's a sophomore. Whenever you saw the dog induce a, a few years back, did you anticipate him uh, approaching the thousand yard club as a sophomore in high school in the Dallas area of Texas? He had more than 600 yards. He had like, maybe I want to say right under 800 yards. Okay. <laughs> Receiver and uh, 10 touchdowns. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I don't know if his stats been updated, but uh, he does. I was going to say, I, I'm now I'm mad at max preps. Dang it. I did all that prep. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of update the you know the the, the media, but uh, we've been keeping track of it all season. I think, Roger, total. I want to say it was right under eight hundred yards, ten touchdowns. But man, I I, I mean, <clears throat> to hate to say I didn't see this coming, I'd be lying because we really try. Okay. To start for it. He has a couple receiver coaches in the area he works with, and he, you know, he puts in work. You know, uh, never missed a day in off season. Uh, you know, uh, through the summer workouts. So every, as soon as you get done with summer workouts and later on that evening, you know, in Texas it's hot, we got to go down to, you know, the receiver training and put his two hours in with that. And we just got to get keep getting better at our routes. That's all we have to do, routes, routes, you know, because. Uh, okay. All that, the measurables and all that stuff, you know, I think all that's overhyped. People get ooh and on over the four two, four three guys. Of course, you always want to be fast, but he doesn't have my speed. But he's fast, you know. He brings other things. Yeah. I didn't have so man I'm man just wait just wait <laughs> all right Tatum before we shift gears and we jump into the running back conversation at Oklahoma State as well as Ollie Gordon and some of the things that that separate him from most everybody else real quick I gotta ask how uh how's the how's your girl doing the track I know she's kind of the real speed freak of the of the family she how, how's how's she doing brother he's doing okay uh okay Relays, the open hundred, uh, open four hundred. They're mixing it up for races. This is a big weekend for us, so we'll see. We'll see exactly where we stand at this weekend. Uh, it's coming along good. You know, she's doing well, man. Uh, like I said, hopefully somebody swoops in and you know offer or come with a late offer. But that'll be that'll be amazing. But man, we are uh, she's smart, so you know, academic wise, you know, we'll still be fine. You know, going to school. But man, we just pushing for somebody to come in and swoop her, man, because uh. Works hard, and, you know, she got the grades and everything. But. Well, I was very, very happy to chastise Casey Dunn, all right? I, will, I, I wouldn't do that to Dave Smith, right? Dave Smith's a little bit of a different animal, but Dave Smith, if you're out there, if you're hearing, this is the perfect scenario, right? Again, legacies matter no matter what. And if you have somebody that knows they're going to be dedicated to the university more than anybody else in the country, it just makes sense. All right, that's, I pled my case. I said my thing. Uh, oh. And now we're going to hit a commercial real quick, buddy, and then we're going to dive into some of the running back conversations. Whenever you are looking to expand your profile in life, make sure that you do it with a Nissan. Again, this week with the March Madness Bracket, we're going to bring to you some of the teams that are excelling more than everybody else in the country. We've already designated the Houston Cougars as the big body beast of our armada. The Auburn Tigers can be described as the pathfinder. They've been thrilling to watch. They've created a lane for themselves after claiming the SEC 
tournament title after knocking off the Florida Gators. They're set to make a massive run in the NCAA tournament. And you know the Iowa State Cyclones are kind of like the Nissan Rogue of the bunch. Take a Nissan Rogue, a Pathfinder, or an Armada on your next big adventure. Make sure you shop Nissan USA. A.com. Again, that is NissanUSA.com. Make sure you shop there now to get your next big adventure started. Secondarily, FanDuel is the bee's knees. It is March Madness. You're trying to capitalize on your bracket and make some dollar-dollar bills. Let FanDuel be the one to help you. If your bracket's already busted, thanks a lot, BYU. It's okay because you can bet on every game of the tourney, whether it's a big upset or if you're going to rock with the one seed. It's time that you go dancing with America's number one sports book right now. New customers get 200 bucks back in bonus bets off of any $5 or more winning bet. That is 200 bones back in your pocket or your wallet that you can use to bet on money lines, point spreads, over-unders, and a multitude of other fun things. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on today to bet on college hoops all the way until they cut the next down. Again, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on today. All right, Tatum, now we get to have the conversation about not, not just Ollie Gordon, right? We'll get to that. But when you think of some of the great universities that have had a long lineage of you know, running backs that have made it in the league, there's not many at this moment that can claim more superiority than Oklahoma State. You got Juba Hubbard doing the daggone thing. You got Justice Hill doing the daggone thing. And you've definitely got Jalen Warren rocking and rolling. People tend to forget that Tyreek Hill was a running back at Oklahoma State, and then he was converted to wide receiver. He's doing the daggone thing. And then we most recently got to watch Chris Carson, right? And if it wasn't for that devastating spinal injury, he'd still be dominating in Seattle. When you think of all the running backs that we have going now, where does Ollie Gordon stack up, and what what do you think makes Ollie Gordon a little bit different than most everybody else? Man, he definitely stacks up with the best. Uh, you know that Chris Brown, that used to be the former running back at CU, Colorado. Yes, sir. He he's definitely that kind of mode down here kind of guy, uh, and he got a little wiggle to him. He can catch the ball. He's more athletic than you you know than you think to be so big. And uh, yeah. He can, you know, he can block, he can catch, and he's, you know, good once he gets the ball in his hands. So, uh, man, he he definitely is aligned with one of the, the the tops, or might be the best when it's all said and done. But well, one of the best, I gonna say the best. You know, we still got Barry and Thurman, but yeah, know. yeah. Well, it's funny you say that, right? So, a uh, little little sneak peek for everybody. The next episode. Uh, I'm going to go over Oklahoma State dream teams, but I'm going to do starters. I'm going to do backups. I'm doing every single position, even all of the offensive line, front to back. And for my running backs, all right, it's it's cheating to put Barry Sanders because Barry Sanders is a cheat code, right? So that goes without question. It's Barry number one. Thurman number I, – actually, I put Bob Finnamore number two. Thurman is number three. And I did put my main man, Tatum Bell, as number four. Or, all right, I will put I will put that real put that out. Well, you know the drill, dude. Like me and you've had conversations, and you were one of the biggest reasons I fell in love with Oklahoma State. You and R. W. McCorders, right, are what changed my perception of the the games at Oklahoma State. Right, so I'm always going to be greatly appreciative. But when you think of Ollie Gordon, all right, so I was able to ask this question to Reggie White, right, and Reggie said that the thing that seemed to stand out the most to him is his jump cut, not just the jump cut, right? There's a lot of dudes that have a very good jump cut. But Reggie was telling me that Ollie Gordon's acceleration off of the jump cut was already NFL level. And so you just mentioned Chris Brown. Uh, my comp for Ollie has pretty much this whole time been been uh, B. John Robinson. And B. John Robinson has a very similar ability to come out of that jump cut. Tatum? I was a tall, fast, white dude that, that could high point the ball, all right? I wasn't jump cutting now, not a nobody, so I know nothing about that that realm. You, you have th- you have 1,000-yard seasons under your belt. You have several of them in college and the NFL, so you might know a little bit about this. What is Reggie talking about when he's saying that his acceleration is considerably different uh, than most everybody? Uh, h- how does that kind of shake out? Yeah, what he's saying is when you make that move, you you don't want to lose speed because the defender's right there in your hip. So you always want to be gaining speed or gaining ground. 
and running downhill. And that's what he's saying. Like when he makes a move or he jump cuts or gives somebody some wiggle, he he's he's always moving forward right after there's really no hesitation. Ah, okay, okay. Got it. He got it. Yeah, I, I don't know if Bijan will be. I think he's bigger than Bijan, but I don't know if he's. I don't know if he's that shifty as Bijan, but he's definitely all around just as you know talented. Well, I there's some people that have compared him to Adrian Peterson, uh, but that you know what, and I appreciate that simply because it pisses OU fans off, right? So, so anytime somebody wants to comp Ollie to Adrian, uh, I'm with it because OU fans <laughs> they come unglued. Yeah, I, he he's definitely a. Uh, he can catch better than AP, but you know, you know, all around, man. That's that's who, man. That's dude. So the last, uh, whenever I was down in Houston, you know, covering some of the seven on seven stuff, uh, AD actually showed up. He showed up to the event and came up in the the press boxes. That was super super cool. Too bad I was wheeling around like a crazy person because you know how these seven on seven tournaments go. You got four fields going on, right? I, you you have eight nine teams all playing at one time, so it's a little bit hectic. Uh, but nonetheless, no, it was an absolute pleasure to have him swing by. And as we continue to talk about the the running back position, so AJ Green comes over from Arkansas, right? And obviously, uh, the idea here is he's going to be the lightning to the thunder package that is Ollie Gordon. Now, the the biggest question I think most people are going to have with that is. Do you think that we could run into a scenario where we get a little bit too, you know, drunk on the punch and we give Ollie Gordon 295 carries, which is what he had last year, which is, you know, the drill. That's a lot of carries, yeah, right? I got 300 be- carries for anybody and to stay healthy, it's impossible, which is why Ollie Gordon entered the Big 12 title game with two pounds of tape on his ankle because he was already jacked up a little bit. Obviously, bringing A.J. Green in on top of Ceci Vlahi is to spell Ollie Gordon, you know, from getting banged up. But you know there's a propensity sometimes to go with the golden hand. Do you think that there's an opportunity for an RB2 to get a significant amount of carries? Or do you think it's possible we revert back to last year and just keep handing the ball off to Ollie over and over and over and over? I mean, you always need a stable of backs, and and okay. I don't know if that's possible. To keep taking on that big old workload, but he has the body for it. But uh, you know, bringing that guy from Arkansas in is definitely delightful because we needed somebody to come with a change of pace, and he can catch out the backfield. It's a it's a whole different you know kind of back. So I I like the move. I like the move. Uh, definitely got to get him some reps. Some reps. He's yeah. Always one play away from being the starter, so you gotta always right. keep, uh, you know. And hey, I can I can get hurt any play any given play, but you know, you know, knock on wood, or whatever. But you always got in your mind as a backup. Hey, I, I I can be the starter at any given play, so I always I always have to be ready. Heck yeah, dude! And you know what? Um, fun fact here: AJ Green, he is only forty seven yards away from joining the thousand yard club in college. He ran for nine hundred fifty three yards at Arkansas, uh, but. He also has several, I repeat, several punt and kickoff returns at Arkansas in the SEC. So like you just mentioned, it's perfect to have the, the lightning package to the thunder package, but it's even better when that lightning package is really a returner, right? He's a returner at heart. So when he gets in the open field, he's going to be an absolute nightmare. I, we, we've been needing something like that. We need some wiggle out the backfield or, or just guys on the team. Wiggle and with their speed, so he definitely be an access to us. Dude, Tatum, it's 2024. I'm sure you have a COVID year. I'm sure you could come back for a season. I mean, <laughs> I mean, hey, Alan Bowman's on his 17th season. Uh, you, 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 <laughs> you might as well join the club, Man, bud. I don't want no problems with these young boys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my guy. All right, so. I got one more ad, and then we're going to jump off into the 2024 expectations, both for for Deuce and Oklahoma State University, because I know um, our last trip to Arlington, you were you were not a happy camper, my guy. Yeah. You, yeah. you were not a happy camper. And I love the passion. I love that you love Oklahoma State that much, um, and it absolutely means the world to me. I know it means the world to the fan base. So let's get your thoughts uh, on that right around the corner here, but uh, briefly – Everybody, you already know the drill, yeah? 
Whenever you're trying to capitalize on anything, especially with March Madness, your destination for TV matters too. Amazon Fire TV should be that destination for you. Because as you look at March Madness and all the craziness of the brackets, you're going to want highlights. You're going to want in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire Stick that you can plug into your existing TV. Whether it's opening weekend baseball or this madness that is March, you're going to want to have this Fire TV because it's just fire. Fire TV recently created their own TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all faux free, including most of us here at the Locked On Network. And you get all of the big time pro and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into the in-game analysis, highlights, and more to allow you to stay up to date in the world of sports. Go check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels yet, you should. To learn more, make sure you go to Amazon.com slash Locked On Fire TV. Again, that is Amazon.com slash Locked On Fire TV. All righty, boss man. Here we go. You you pick, all right? Do you want to start with the expectations for Oklahoma State in 2024, or do you want to stick with the, the idea of Tatum, Deuce, Bell having a massive season this year? You you go first. This is your world. I'm just an oyster in it. Well, starting with Deuce, I, okay. I, expectations are always high. We want to play better or have better. You know, better. My expectations can't be higher higher for him than he has for himself. But my goal, you know, for him to have a better year than he had last year and stay healthy. But we don't have a quarterback, so that's gonna be tough. And if you have any, you know, in Oklahoma or Colorado, send them my way. D, tell them DM me, hint, hint. But uh, I'm asking for a friend. But no, seriously, uh, no. He, I, I just want him to stay healthy. Uh, you know, hopefully, you know, play better than he does last year. Our quarterback is gone. He transferred, so it's like, uh, you yeah. know, it's, it's gonna be tough. So all he has to do is just continue doing what he's doing, show improvement, and you know, we're gonna go, you know, around to a few camps this summer and. Knock those out the park and just you know solidify our, our spot. You know that's all we want to do. We want. Hey, are you coming to the spring finale meet and greet practice thingy at the end of April? The, the spring game. And yeah, I, yeah. I don't do the, the spring golf. game. I've done it before, but uh, I I can't get down with the golf. You know them guys be at the golf all day, and then you know it's a you know seeing the older guys and meeting new guys. It's 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 a good time. You know the spring game. You know the night before. It's fun. But uh, I don't know if I'm going to make it this year. I don't know. I can't commit to it. Well, the reason I ask is uh, I actually am bringing a quarterback from Colorado who moved from Georgia. He's six foot, 205 pounds. He was the varsity starter last season. We were undefeated, and then he tore his ACL. But he's completely – he gets released officially uh, April 2nd. So April 2nd, he will have the full bill of health. We've already started doing some more pitching lessons and stuff like that. So I am bringing a quarterback with me at the end of April just to throw it out there, Budro. Well, <laughs> well, does he, you know, he can stay with me for two seasons and down here in Dallas, you know. Hey, me and his dad are tight. Me and his dad are tight. So the, there's, there's some negotiating abilities here. I promise you that. <laughs> <laughs> But no, the yeah. expectations for the for OSU are, are really high because the whole team is back, the whole defense is back, but the whole offensive line is back. Man, all the guys are back. The quarterback is back, so I know it's gonna be a quarterback battle. But everybody else is pretty, you know. Receivers might have a little competition battle, but other than that, man, everything else is pretty set in stone. We just gotta stay healthy, one game at a time. Can't get too high, can't get too low. Just gotta stay even keel. Like last year, we beat OU, and then we we. That that momentum didn't carry over to USC. I mean UCF. UCF, so, yep. Yeah. But that hurt us. So we just got to stay even keel. And they learning. You know they learned. They learned. That was that was a, a hard lesson. But and now now it's twelve teams. Man, it's no. It's really no excuse. Let's just make these playoffs. Let's make these playoffs, and let's see what we can do. Well, and that that that's a, a really good. You kind of answered my question. My question was going to be, right? Um, is it Big Twelve title or bust? Or let me ask you this. Are you okay with us losing again in Arlington, but still making the 12 team playoff? (laughs) 
man. I was, right? I hate how the Big 12 championship game is at 12 o'clock, first of all. I hate that. You know, the kids not even warmed up. It's hard on their bodies. You know, this, it's just I, – I don't like that part of it, body, but I, I would – would love to win the Big Twelve championship, but but most importantly, I want to win the big, you know, make to the big to the big, you know, to the All big right. twelve. So you want to go dancing? Yeah. Ah, that's, well, and you know what, dude? Um, so I've I've, done, I've recorded a couple couple uh, player current players, right? And I can tell you the expectations inside the locker room are through the roof. And I tell you that the biggest thing that uh, gives me some comfort is one of the things I've gathered is the leadership this year is significantly better than last year's. And this is not a knock on last year's leadership, right? Obviously, we had to have some pretty good leaders to go on that, that big-time run that we did. But, but the attitude is different, right? There was some complacency in the locker room for the first three games of last season, right, that we did overlook them. I've heard this from several, several people. They weren't even talking about it. They were talking about the matchups with K-State and KU, and, and it caught us. They're not doing that this year, right? They understand the lay of the land. They understand that making it to Arlington is the absolute bare minimum expectation, but it's a different feel, right? And another big thing, when I had Hudson on the Hudson on the show the other day, he mentioned that I hadn't really thought a lot about is we had 36 new players last year. And we had, we had new defense coordinator, right? You got a lot of guys unproven to some degree defensively. We didn't know what we were going to do at running back because we just locked, lost Dominic Richardson and Jalen Warren, obviously, to the NFL. And then this year, it's completely different, right? They know what to do. They know all of the play calls. They know all of the checks. They know all of the stunts and the twists. They know the motions. They, they can come out of the huddle, and they know the secondary play. Throw. You, know, you know how it is. They get that this year. So this season, all of the little minuscule details, they've got that. So whenever you have that, and I'm sure you've had times in your career, you know, you've had seasons where it was a crapshoot. You didn't know if you were going to win seven games, ten games, two games. You had no idea. But you also had seasons that you could just feel in the locker room, this is different, right? This is considerably different. And to give everybody out there a, a peek behind the blinders, what is the, the difference between a, a kind of chaotic locker room and a locker room that is so galvanized it's it's in, insane? Yeah, man, when the players lead the team or, you know, when you have the leadership coming from the players and the players holding each other accountable, that's what makes the team excel, you know what I mean? It can't just always be the coaches getting on you, your parents getting on you. It has, You have to want it, you know, and that's the show. Once you show it, it'll be infectious throughout the whole team. So you just want it to be – Contagious through the whole team. Hey, we we gotta win. Like you said, the expectation Big Twelve championship is the bare minimum. At least yes, getting sir. there is the minimum. So we 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 just gotta take one game at a time. That's not even worried about the Big Twelve championship. That's just that's just how our business with uh you know South Dakota State or whoever it, Montana or whoever it is. That's just that's just you know because they what they they coming off national championship and they you know. You know how that is in college college football to change, man. You know these kids transferring left and right. You never know who 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 they're loading up with. It's like free agency, so it's a uh, it's crazy, man. So you always got to be on your A game. Yeah, bro. We got South Dakota State, which you're right. They've won back to back FCS national titles. They've won 29 games in a row, and you can't give them a hard time, right? Because Chris Kleiman was doing the same thing at North Dakota State before he took the job at Kansas State, and they were knocking off at least one Power 5 school every single year that he was at North Dakota State. So, right, nobody wanted to play North Dakota State. That has now become South Dakota State. And then it doesn't get any easier. Week two, we have Arkansas coming to town. Are we better than Arkansas? Absolutely, right? But they're still in the SEC, so their defensive line, their offensive line, they're going to be just as big, bad, and powerful as ours is. Absolutely. And, and then, right, it still doesn't get easier because Tulsa, Tulsa has a crap ton of D1 starting transfers, right? They've got several Cowboys. They've got several OU players. They've, I know, I've noticed they took some guys from LSU and, and, and some of the smaller SEC schools. So Tulsa's not going to be a cakewalk either, my dude. And then we begin Big 12 play with freaking Utah. 
the darling of the conference that everybody and their mom has already picked to win the daggone thing. It's not going to be easy. Um, but this has to be the biggest year of capitalization ever for Gundy, at least in my personal opinion. We've had years where we had high expectations, right? 1946, after being undefeated. 1976, after the 75 season, and we had several unanimous All-Americans. 2017, 2012, 2013, 2021. There's several times where there's a lot of anticipation. But in every single one of those instances, nobody expected us to win the conference, right? Like high expectations at Oklahoma State were to play for a Big 12 title. This year is different. We've gotten to the top of the mountaintop so many freaking times. We just need to get over the dang thing. We need to see what the other side of the mountain looks like because we keep getting to the top and sliding back down. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, 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 thank you for allowing me to rant there for a second. All right. Um, I get, I get a little, little fired up. All right, buddy. So this season, what is your most anticipatory uh, road game of the year? We are going to, to Provo, Utah. Obviously, that's going to be a pretty fun one. What I about the, the Arizona schools? Don't, which one do we go to? Arizona or Arizona? Arizona? Arizona State comes. Well, Arizona State does come to Stillwater. So we go to Arizona. That's gonna be tough. They got their. Do we play them this year? I don't think we play Arizona this year, unfortunately. I know. I know. CU game will be tough. Yeah, we're at Colorado. It's gonna be mm -hmm. one probably, and you know Colorado. You know, got Shador. They got the hype and everything. So that's gonna be tough. Texas Tech. I don't know. I don't know our schedule off top of the head, but I know Texas Tech gonna be tough. Um, yep. Do we play TCU this year? Yes. Yes, we do in Fort Worth. Unfortunately, yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, tough. You know, so it's it's it, man, it's it's no weeks off. So out of uh, Provo, Utah, or Boulder, Colorado, where are you going, my dude? <sighs> man, I don't I don't. We'll 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 come back to this later before the season. <laughs> <laughs> Let me do my research on dumb things. All right, Bubba. All right, man. Well, hey, dude, uh, I greatly, greatly appreciate your time. Uh, you've been very, very patient, right? Uh, we, we've, we tried to do this several times, and I kept losing the internet. I upgraded to fiber optic just because our last couple times irritated the, the tar out of me. So thank you for, for being patient. I cannot wait to get hooked back up. See what you can do, all right, about making a trip the end of April. I will. Go I may or may not have a guy that can throw the ball a couple times to Deuce, and we'll just talk see what about, it looks like. About in high school, throwing it to him. Not not when we get to college. We're talking about now. Uh huh. I, I prefer, preferably 25 or 26, but we'll take a, a kid that's in the, you know, you know, that's going to be a senior, but preferably 26 or 26. We, we'll take what we can get because we just need a quarterback. But we'll hey, he's, he's in the class as my son, man. He's only a sophomore. Hey. And he was the starting varsity quarterback that had us undefeated as a as a freshman. What school? Fountain Fort Carson. Okay. Okay. Well, hey, was, we, we've had back-to-back 10-win -back seasons. Uh, down, our coach is legit. Come on down here to Dallas, man. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of pokes, and, and you can do your show live. We can do our show live together. We can, you know, man, we can take this to the whole nother level, man. <laughs> don't do that to me don't do that to me tatum you know i've already i've hey when logan graduates all right i'm either moving to dallas or back to stillwater that's that it is what it is i am where i am and go on let them come to dallas now and let them experience that texas friday night lights and then be the best decision you ever made but we'll, we'll want to get no tampering mm -hmm. truck. And me. it's funny you say that, right? So th they moved from Georgia to Colorado. And mm -hmm. his dad and I have had several conversations about how it's just harder to get exposure up here because the weather. I, like, I, 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 when I was in Texas, you know, in Colorado, I coached, you know, eight years there. And mm -hmm. it was, it's, 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 it's watered down compared to Dallas. But let's just say that. Because the, the. No, it's 100%. And it's lack of reps. That, the level of talent and the, the weight. Man, it's just the way they run stuff in Texas is just completely different to Colorado. Colorado doesn't even have spring football. 
So correct. That alone sets you back. You know what I mean? So it's like Texas, Texas is doing spring, but they, they start spring next month. So and it's a whole like college, it's spring, spring game, and yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's just it's just different. But uh we'll talk later, man. All right, Bubba. Hey, let the fine people out here know how they can find you, how they can reach you, and get a hold of you, boss man. Man, the only way you can catch me is on Twitter, man. X is what they call it now. Uh, T-Speed Texas. T-Speed TX. Speaking of X and Twitter, when's our dude Dez going to get gonna get some compensation here, man? What, 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 what's going on? Oh, now, the, the fact that uh, Twitter changed to X. Oh, that makes sense. And, and, and Dez is always throwing up the X. I feel like I feel like Dez should be getting some royalties from Elon. That'd be smart. That'd be smart if he could. That'd be, that'd be awesome if he could. <laughs> All righty, Bubba. I appreciate you. We'll link up soon enough. Sounds good. Thank you for having me. All righty, boss. Well, it's nice to have a little reprieve from basketball to talk a little bit of football. And, of course, you know, it's nice that we finally got the offer out to Tatum Deuce Bell. That was one of the ones I was waiting on. Another name to look out for, everybody. Go do your research. Tatum Evans. He's a 2026 linebacker prospect. I've talked about him on, on my recruiting show. I've, I've talked about him a little bit here. The things that kid is doing is going to be massively beneficial for Oklahoma State. The ascension for Oklahoma State linebackers has been phenomenal. From Amen and Bog Mamiga to Malcolm Rodriguez, Devin Harper. Now you're seeing Nick Martin garner all of the awards in the country that he rightfully has earned and deserved. Now you've got some Eric Johnson on board. Now you've got Gunnar Wilson on board. Now we're looking at some potential prospects. And to me, Tatum Evans has got to be the next get for the 2026 class. All righty, guys. That's all we're going to have for this one right here. As always, you know, I love you. God bless. Go Pokes. Thank you for tuning in to make this your first listen here in Locked On Oklahoma State. You could be anywhere. So happy that you choose to be here. All righty, y'all. Go hit the like button. Dislike it because that's okay, too. Share, comment, subscribe. My podcast and people out there, the foundation, the bricks, the bread and the butter, I appreciate you. Hit the stars. Leave a review. Do what you do. That's it. All righty, y'all. Later, taters.